the three laws of motion. So the first law is every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force acts upon it. The second law, force equals mass times acceleration. And the third law, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the first law states every object in a state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force acts upon it. That's basically saying if an object is at rest and there's no force acting upon it from either side, unbalanced force. So if there's no unbalanced force, it'll stay motionless. And the same goes with an object that is in motion. It's in motion and there's no unbalanced force acting upon it. It will stay in motion. So here we have an FBD, which just means a free body diagram which shows the forces acting upon an object. So in this example, we have uh, forces on in every direction, but this arrow right here is longer than the arrow on this side, which shows an unbalanced force, meaning that the object right now is accelerating to the right because this is longer. And the top and bottom arrows, they're the same, so the object is balanced uh, vertically, so it won't move up or down. Uh, next, we have a normal force. So the normal force is the force perpendicular to a surface. So such as a table, it's the force that comes off of the table. So here we have a box. Gravity pulls the box down, but the normal force pushes off of the table at, at the exact same uh, magnitude as gravity pulling it down. So that's why if you put your hand on a table, your hand wouldn't go through the table. It would just rest on top of the table. But as you can see, these forces are equal, so the box doesn't move. Uh, next we have an FBD of a car. So here we have the wheels on the road, so like the drivetrain, the engine, that's pushing the car forward, right? And then we have the arrows on the back, so like air resistance and the force of friction, so like the wheels. So these arrows, they're if you add them up, you add them up, put them tip to tail, they would be equal to the wheels on the road. So this car is moving at a constant uh, speed. It's not accelerating or decelerating. And once again, with the normal force, the vehicle isn't going to go into the ground because this force on top is exactly the same and opposite of the force on the bottom, gravity. Uh, so next we have the second law, which reads force equals mass times acceleration. So the way we write that, is F equals MA. But the way a lot of people like to write it is A equals F over M. So what this means is, for this, let's talk about the second one. What it means is if you have more force, then the acceleration of an object will be greater. But if you have more mass, then the acceleration of an object will be less. So the F is proportional to the A and the M is inversely proportional to the A, to acceleration. So if we look at this, we have a 10 pound dumbbell. It, let's just say it has the same amount of force, but it only has 10 pounds, so it'll move just say roughly like that if you push it. But you take the same amount of force and you apply that to a 100 pound dumbbell, it'll move a lot slower. And this can also be applied to rockets. The heavier a rocket is, the more um, force you need to lift it to, to make it accelerate. And we can also we can go back to this first equation, which uh, reads force is mass times acceleration. So if we increase the mass or you increase acceleration, we increase force. So we can look at this and we can see with this, what makes the rocket ri uh, 
lift off the ground is the gas. So if we increase the mass of the gas, we increase the acceleration or speed that the gas is leaving the engine nozzles, we can increase the force that this gas creates, which then can lift the rocket. So moving on to the third law, it states for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, let's not let's not use action or reaction. Let's get rid of those and use force. Because if I wave at you, which is an action, you don't have to wave back. You can, but you don't have to. With this, it just gets rid of that and makes it a force. So we can go back to the rocket uh, example. So the force that we just talked about that the gas creates, that force is the same force that lifts up the rocket. Of course, the force isn't happening right as the rocket leaves. It's actually pushing off of the top of the gas tank. Because if you think about it, here's the gas tank. The gas is leaving, so the fuel is leaving the gas tank. So it's going down, which then has the force pushing up off the top of the gas tank. So uh, going back to the normal forces, normal force is basically created because the force of gravity hits the table, or the box hits the table because of the force of gravity, and the table pushes back. So the table pushing back is the normal force that we experience. So that's, once again, why your hand does not go through the table, because the table pushes back. And another example of this is with a wall. If you push a wall, then the wall will push back. That's, that's the reason you don't go through the wall, 